Well, today we got a little patch in a garage here. Um, I'm just going to go through it and show you kind of the process, but especially focusing on how to spread mud. Uh, so as we get get to it, this is 5 8 drywall here, and you can see there's some cleanup needed. The tear out wasn't perfect. Um, we'll just clean this up right here. We'll unplug these things. We'll kind of make that a little triangle, and I'll show you what I do when I patch it. And uh, we'll get started. And we'll also be careful not to screw into that pipe. It should be okay because it's a setback. Far enough, I think, but um, <laughs> I'd rather not cause another leak. That's why I was removed in the first place. So I'm just going to clean this up using uh, my knife. Some stuff in here that's iffy, but uh, the owner doesn't really care that much. Um, Oh, you know, there's a stud right there. Just cleaning off the back side of this so when I uh, put the new sheet in, it doesn't set on top of the paper and and uh, stand out from the old drywall. So I normally when I hang the concrete I usually leave a half inch gap. It doesn't look like whoever hung this before did. So I'm just going to match it so it looks uniform. Forty one and seven as they say. Oh my goodness, forty two? <laughs> Well, it ain't straight, but that's no problem. What do you want to work? You might wonder why I don't use a uh, keyhole saw to do this. Um, mainly because I don't want to cut through a pipe or a wire. And if I just using a Fixed blade travel knife. It's set out further than a typical utility knife. It cuts through with uh, less mess and less potential harm. So I'm going, to, I'm going to cut this back to the stud um, because there's damage here in this area and here in this area. So I'll get it. Oh. So I just cut a line here where the stud is. To get all this damage out, it's probably the easiest way. I just marked it. I could use a square to cut it, but you can eyeball it if you have enough experience. <laughs> I guess I do. So I scored the front of the sheet rock, and now I'm just breaking it and seeing if there's any screws in my way, which it doesn't look like there are. Oh, there's one right there. And then I'm going to cut through to the back side of the paper. Never cut towards your arm. <laughs> there we go. Screw, good figure, two screws. There goes my knife blade. That, that's what happens in your demo. Sheet rock, you go through blades. So now I've got it cut out, I'm just going to get the overall size. We're going to go 42 all the way. 42 by 53 and 6. And when I say 6, I mean 6 eighths. That's kind of how I do it. Since I have my tape out, I may as well measure for the box. 4-2 and 3. Big, as it were. And 
And we always measure from the joint, not the corner. Uh, we're gonna go 42 and one. Seven and five big, which is big is just one sixteen. And I draw arrows to say which direction my measurements are coming from. If I write a forty two one. And see what happens here. Now where this outlet is might be a little stubborn. It's got the metal do hickey walkers that hang down there. You know, I'm trying to tuck it into the wall over here at the same time. So, what I'm going to do, see, just take this off right here. Okay. Flip it up. And... Ah, there's multiple uses for a hatchet. One of them. That. Oh, she's a beauty. So a little tight up here. You know, the demo on this wasn't perfect, so I had to uh, kind of cut it crooked here and cut it crooked there and kind of make it kinda make it work. So when you're hanging like this, you want to make sure that you get your uh, bottom in. The bottom of the sheet often will hang up on something. It makes it pretty hard to hang if that happens. So, looks like I got to hang up right here. Yep, still got one. So we got a little gapage over here, but it's good over here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tack it right here, and then I'm gonna lift it up here. If I can get under it, trust the old hatchet. Super. And uh, another use for hatchet. I have a lifter too, but. Sweet. Put a little deep going into a corner. That way I can. Uh... Alright, we're gonna do our first coat of mud. Since it's a garage, I'm not gonna worry about really finishing it out as smooth as I would inside the house. But I am gonna put a decent coat of mud on it because it is a painted garage and it's pretty much a uh, something of a smooth wall finish. So first we'll put a little water. We're not going to use too much hot mud. Use clean water. It's not a clean bottle but it's clean water. Pretty much. And add your mud to it. I just kind of eyeball it. I want it workable. I want it so it uh, basically just about falls off the knife, but not quite. You want to try not to get too much on your clothes. Because it definitely doesn't come out in the wash very well. Mm -hmm. I'm using mesh tape and hot mud. Uh, some people might use paper tape. Uh, I find I've had a lot of success with mesh tape and even long term in my own home using it. Um, I haven't had any issues with cracking, but I do know. Sometimes mesh tape does tend to develop hairline cracks a little bit easier than paper tape does. 
But one thing I will do is use paper tape in the corner. So I'm just going to put a little mud up here. Like so. The reason why I do this is mesh tape tends to, uh, I mean, manufacturers say you can use it in corners, but it tends to be harder to form into a right angle. And then also, when your knife gets in the corner like this, like I'm doing it, it uh, tends to catch catch the mesh, mesh and actually cut it. So then you got edges of mesh tape sticking up out of your mud it is aggravating is one word for it so I'll just put a coat I'll coat in my corner bead with hot mud and then when I put the coat of finish no, finish mud over the top I'll just coat the corner bead. Generally speaking, I try to, even on inside jobs, I try to do, do everything with just two coats of mud, if possible. Sometimes it's not possible. So this, this coat, I'm just trying to get the tape covered, float it out a little, and making sure I get mud in the joints. Uh, Often I'll, I'll pre-fill my joints on a job where, where I'm being particular. But again, this is a garage. And uh, <laughs> I just didn't do it. I'm really doing a better job than the other requires of me. Mainly for the purposes of the video. So when I put my light on, I'm doing a coat just thick enough to cover the tape and just float it out a tiny little bit. Wiping the screws down tight. Tight as I can, which means get all the mud off that I can. And I'm going to feather it in so I'm putting pressure on the outside of the knife. So that it's a nice thin to nothing. It goes to nothing where the drywall is, and then it leaves kind of a little bit over the top of the tape. All right, it's been a little bit. Just gonna show you how. The pen and knife. I know this uh, big glob of mud like that. You want to get a little bit like this. And I know some people. Well. Some people use the 90 degree trowel, but I take some mud and I just take the edges off my knife like that, that uh, to use, well, just one edge, so that I don't leave a bunch on the bottom, and I kind of just work it in sideways like that, and like that, and I come down straight like that, and this will leave me with the finish that I can fix the sanding uh, or whatever after I'm done. Now let's work that joint a little. So I'm going to take get some more on my knife and we'll just start here. Get some mud on there and we'll smooth it later. So I like to wipe off the edges of the mud like that so it doesn't dribble all over the place. And working around this junk is a little hard, but it's okay. If I was really particular, I'd just take it down and, and uh, instead of working on it, but again, it's a garage. So I'm getting about that much mud on my knife and then wiping out the edges. 
I'm going to start with this. Put pressure on the outside of the knife. So I'm going to put pressure on the outside of the knife to center it up like that. And I'm going to come in putting pressure on the bottom part of the knife. Spot. Don't you know? So I'm just gonna once again a little. Ah, it's getting there. Uh, depending on how nice of a finish they want, you can either leave it and just prime over it or Give it a little bit of a sanding to dress it up a bit. You know, if I was smart, I would have taped this over and on the way. But, big if. Yeah. I don't know how easy it is to forget you. You got a live wire right next to you.